<laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the AAS YouTube channel. And this is part of the good stuff. This is part of the great stuff. This is the AAS Journal Author Series. And I am super happy to have a quad with us today, our first four person one. And with us today, we have Tong Ji Zhang, Yu Hu, Kang Jio, and Yu Chen Wang. And I think I did okay on those names. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, and who are you? Let's start with you. Uh, what's your geolocation? Where are you located at? Uh, I'm in Shandong province. Um, well, it's near the spring city, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Jinan. Cool. Um, yeah. Very cool. Uh, in spring, so there's no snow on the ground. Is there any snow? No, the snow has gone, yeah. and there's no snow, and uh, the temperature is 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 pretty good, uh, right now. Very nice. Uh, it's uh with gentle wind. Mm-hmm. Good. So it's very comfortable. I think those fish behind you are very comfortable too. They look like they're having a good time back there in that aquarium. It's very nice. Very cool. All um, right. Yeah, they are. Uh, Okay, uh, and Kang Jio, uh, where are you located at? Are you all in the same? Hi. Yeah, do you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm in uh, Henan province in China, which is at the center of the China geologically. Cool, okay. And, uh, today is uh, partly cloudy and I feel uh, a good. little bit cold. Because uh, the the winter just uh, gone, and uh, the the weather still be freezing. Ah, ooh, brr, cold. <laughs> okay, it is March fifth, uh, Tuesday, March fifth, as we record this of twenty twenty four, and I'm in Phoenix. Um, and uh, there's no snow, um, but we are approaching spring, so things are starting to warm up. The first little plants got their little buds out today. We had little grape trees, and so they're starting to do their thing. Uh let's see, and you Chen Wang. Um Hello. Hello there. Where are you Hello. at? Yeah, I'm now in Beijing, which is capital, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Uh Tong Ji Zhang, where are you located at? He's somewhere. Okay. <laughs> we'll carry on. <laughs> Okay, let's go around the table, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about what you like to do for research. Um, so, uh, Yu Chen Wang, what do you like to do for research? Yeah, so uh, I, uh, well, in the past few years, I mainly uh, study the application of machine learning and the artificial neural networks on constraining uh, cosmological parameters. Mm -hmm. So actually, I, I've done several, uh, I've done several works and published paper, which is quite related to what we are going to talk about this today. Cool. And currently, I'm also interested in the you know the dark matter halos of galaxies, and also uh, study the uh, correlations between the baryonic processes and the dark matter halos. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Let's go around. And Kang, what do you like to do for research? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm interested in the measurement of the observational hyperparameter data, ah. uh, which uh, specifically using the cosmic chronometers method uh -huh. that in the differential age of the very massive and the passive galaxies. Cool. And uh, currently, uh, I'm collaborating with Professor Zhang and uh, uh, Professor Michele Molesco, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the university, uh, who is in the University of the Bologna. Nice. And uh, uh, we have got uh, one new uh, observational hyperparameter data with, with that published in the APGS cool. uh, last year. And uh, currently, uh, uh, we are focusing on the stellar population synthesis models, which can be uh, incorporated furtherly to improve the reliability and the uh, accuracy of the measurement. Very nice. Cool. And you, who? What do you like to do for research? Yeah, oh, I'm actually come from a computer science background, and this okay. is the very first paper of me in the field of cosmology. Um, so I feel really honored to be invited to 
for this chat. So thank you, Frank. Thank you. Um, I uh I graduated from Georgetown University, uh oh. in Washington D.C. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh okay. yes. Uh, and um, uh, for the next step, I plan to um cool. study study. Um, and uh, I just applied for the PhD uh degree in Beijing Normal University. Cool. Cross my fingers. Hope you get in. Hope it goes. Very cool. <laughs> Uh, I, Tongji, you hear me? You with me? <laughs> and what do you like to do for research? But you'll have to unmute yourself or we won't hear you. Okay, sorry, Frank. I hear you. Yes, uh, uh this Hu Yu and uh, Hu Yu is my uh PhD candidate in in the coming uh in the coming the September. And okay. his major also, uh, besides the cosmology. He is major also in safety observation. You know, recent years we have done a lot of the safety observation in fact. Right. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Today, uh, this paper, who is a co first author, so he or she want to give the detail uh, the discussion about uh, the papers. And uh, Yu Chen mm -hmm. is also. My uh, undergraduate student, uh, undergraduate student, uh, several years ago. Right now, he uh, has a PhD candidate in Peking University for his cosmology research work. Yeah. And uh, you know, in twenty twenty one, Yu Chen also published a paper in APJ Supplement. Yeah. Uh, yes, about uh, the Supplements. neural. Network model on cosmology. Mm -hmm. you no, know? yes. And Jiao Kang is also my uh, PhD student. Uh, yeah. Right now, he uh, pursue his postdoctoral in Zhengzhou University. He the major in hyper parameter cosmologies. Uh, yeah. He do some data process in the hyper parameter data, and uh, he collaborates with the. Uh, uh, Italy, uh, my colleagues in Polonia universities for the collaboration of uh, data processes. Yeah. Yeah, he also published a paper in APJ supplement Yay. in 2023. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Yes. Cool. Uh, yes. Uh, I hope we also publish more paper in APJ. <laughs> and that's more you to you for my well, I hope you do too. So you know. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. That was great. That was very good. Okay. 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 This yeah. is gonna bring us to this very awesome. As soon as I find my uh sharing button, here we go. We're gonna bring us to this very awesome APJ supplement article. It is the open access era, people. It's open access. You can go grab a copy for free. Go get one. A non-parametric reconstruction of the Hubble parameter HZ based on radial basis function neural networks. And Tongji, Yu, Kang, and Yu Chen, take us away. Yes, uh, <clears throat> you know, for the for this research field uh, on Hubble. Hub cosmologies, uh, we have done a lot of work since 2004 or uh, 2006. Mm -hmm. uh, in, 2000, in 2007, we published the, the first Hub parameter paper in the world for the, uh, con for the cosmological constraint on the uh, 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 constraint on the cosmological parameter use the Hubble parameter data. Yes. Since then, we have done this field for about 20 years. Uh, right now, recent years, we moved the research direction to the uh, machine learning right. uh, application on the Hubble parameter cosmologies. Yes, this paper is uh, a continue of the, the previous works on the Hubble parameter cosmologies. Uh, uh, the idea is uh, come from the, <clears throat> the current excited research field of machine learning. Mm -hmm. uh, in 
about in 2007, I noticed uh, maybe the machine learning is a very important uh, application in cosmologies. Uh, so at that time, I uh, I direct uh, some of my students to use uh, machine learning to do mm -hmm. some work. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, right now these people, these papers, uh, I I I let uh, Hu Yu give a more detail for the uh, for the the radio basis function neural networks. Right. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. Good. Okay, let's do an intro. Yeah. Uh, okay, so maybe we will dive into our paper um, titled A Non-Parametric Reconstruction uh, of the Hubble Parameter HZ Based on Radio Basis Function Neural Network. Um, the quest to measure the Hubble Parameter HZ lies at the heart of cosmology. Uh, and it uh, offers us uh, a lens through which to view the universe's, the universe's expansion rate and its evolutionary history. And as highlighted by Moresco in 2022, accurately uh, uh, determine HZ is pivotal and yet fraught with challenges ranging from distance measurements to observational uncertainties. Yes. Okay. And in recent years, the emergence of the hub attention um, has underscored these challenges. Uh, it reveals a discrepancy between the local and cosmic microwave uh, background-based measurements of HZ. Yeah. And this intriguing puzzle discussed by Word uh, in 2019 and Friedman in 2021 uh, hints at the potential for new physics or systematic errors in our current models. Okay. And in response to these challenges, our research explores non-parametric methods as a model independent solution, and especially focusing on radio basis function neural networks. Right. Cool. Um, traditional methods uh, like the Gaussian process, despite right. their popularity, uh, encounter obstacles such as overfitting and the complexity of choosing an appropriate covariance function. Yes. Um, aside from the Gaussian process, we've, uh, we've explored a variety of tools, each with unique strength and its limitations. The uh, PCA or the principal component analysis, for example, yes. is a powerful technique for dimensional reduction uh, and helping us to focus on the most significant aspects of our data. Mm -hmm. However, it operates under the assumption of linearity uh, and might overlook critical information in less dominant components. Okay. Uh, it's a limitation when, <clears throat> uh, when dealing with the complexity of cosmological data. Okay. <clears throat> Good. The uh, Lewis method or locally weighted scatter plot smoothing. Yes, this one. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, it offers a more nuanced approach, adapting to local data variations without assuming a global model. This method provides flexibility, but the choice of smoothing parameters is crucial, and yes. incorrect choices can lead to overfeeding or underfeeding, which challenges its application in accurately modeling cosmic expansion. Okay. Um, the uh, artificial neural network AN class of model represent a significant leap forward. Uh, it inspired by um uh by the structure and function of biological neural networks yes these models excel in capturing nonlinear relationships within data and offering robustness against the overfitting and prior dependent issues okay uh, however, none of the scholars uses ANN class of models take covariance between the redshift points into account. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Our paper positions the RBFNN, uh, which is the radio basis function neural network, as a novel alternative, uh, leveraging its strength in generalization, noise resistance, and uh, convergence speed for reconstructing the Hubble parameter. Cool. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. um, the artificial neural networks or ANNs takes uh, inspiration from the way our brain's neural uh, neural network uh, operates operate. Mm -hmm. They link together simple units to mimic biological neural behavior, and offering a more manageable system for us to explore and manipulate. Cool. Okay. ANS stand out for their learning capabilities and absorbing information through input and output data and refining their internal uh, parameters to improve future performance. Um, this process simplifies complex, uh, complex systems and it focuses only on the inputs and the outputs okay. and treating the uh, intricate internal mechanics as a black box. Okay. So uh, what makes ANNs particularly appealing is their efficiency in providing faster solutions that while not always perfect, uh, it significantly reduces the computational effort. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. their design is inherently simple uh, and effective. Uh, okay. And it facilitates parallel processing to uh, expedite computations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. moreover, ANS display okay. impressive fault tolerance and adaptability, uh, which makes them yeah. versatile tools across um, uh, a multitude of applications. Uh, since their uh, significant uh, advancement in the 1980s, ANS, uh, I think maybe you could screw it down a little bit. Go down a little bit, sure. No, no, no. Oh, it's a good app, app, app. Oh, Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we got a little bandwidth lag. Yeah, uh, the 1980s. Yeah, since uh -huh. the 1980s. Yes. Um, the ANS have revolutionized various domains, including image processing and pattern recognition, fault diagnosis, signal processing, and automatic control. Mm -hmm. And they're indispensable. Sorry, I have a phone call. Okay. And their indispensable role in today's technological landscape is underscored by their broad utilities and adaptabilities. Yes. And the development of specific in and tabs to address particular needs highlights their versatile uh, their versatile back propagation networks have uh, become essential for tasks involving supervised learning uh, and whole field networks are favored for associative memory functions. Uh, well, uh, the wavelet networks merge wavelet analysis with neural network techniques for enhanced signal processing. And the radio basis function networks we use in this paper are preferred for their uh, powerness, uh, th their prowess in um, function approximation and classification, yes. uh, and yeah. etc. I, I don't have to mention that all of them, I think. And in this study, we harness the power of RBFNN to strip to structurize observational data of the Hubble parameter obtained via the cosmic chronometer approach. And the data set compromises 32 distinct redshift values. Yes. And RBF and, and architecture tailored for this analysis includes an input layer matching the number of data points, a vast uh, hidden layer with 10,000 nodes and two node uh, and a two node output layer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this output layer is designed to yield two specific values, which is HZ, uh, the Hubble parameter, and Sigma Z, the uh, associated identity. Uh, yes. Okay. 
The RBFNN operates through two principal layers. The first is a nonlinear transformation layer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it employs radio basis function to evaluate the input data into a higher dimensional feature space and okay. enabling the capture of complex nonlinear relationships within the data. Okay. The transformed output from this layer is then related to linear to a linear margin layer, yes. where um, the information is synthesized to produce the final output. Cool. Okay. Use of a RBF neural network involves two key uh, stages, uh, which is uh, construction and learning. To construct an RBFNN, uh, so one could begin by citing the input and the designed target outputs. Okay. Next, um, the number of neurons in the hidden layer, along with the centers and the width of the radio basis function, should be determined. Okay. And uh, this can be done using clustering uh, techniques or uh, as in our case, by treating every data point as a potential sender and use rate regression to avoid overfeeding. Uh, we will talk about this uh, okay. uh, more de uh, for more okay. detail. Um, so the rate regression uh, is a effective method in reducing overfeeding across various machine learning methods, including RBFNs. It uh, works by balancing the need to uh, minimize errors on the training data with the need to keep the model's parameters value um, W small. Right. Okay. Um, this not only simplifies the model, but also uh, enhance its ability to generalize from the training data to new unseen data. Yes. Okay. Uh, with read regression, we just uh, we adjust the uh, influence of each weight in the neural uh, network and ensuring that no single weights are too uh, has too much impact on the learning process. Okay. Okay. This makes the RBF more robust to overfitting, and uh, it helps it to focus on the underlying trends in the data rather than noises. Right. Uh, and uh, once the network is set up, the learning phase begins. Uh, we use uh, iterative algorithms, um, namely gradient descent, to fine tune the weights, the centers, and the widths of the RBFs. Mm -hmm. uh, we control the iterative learning process by implementing an early stopping strategy, which in our study involves capping the number of iteration at 100, as opposed to okay. Okay. Continue, continuing until a fixed error threshold is reached. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Um, and this method not only helps in preventing overfeeding, but also speed up the overall training process. You can do 100 no matter what. Okay, good, cool. Yeah. I'm with you. And, uh, Here we go. Yeah, yes. So uh, light, uh, so in the subsection, uh, 2.3, we describe the learning algorithm of the RBF and, uh, neural network. Okay. So let uh, Y prime represent the network's output and Y denote the reference or benchmark value against which the network's performance is measured. Yes. Uh, okay. It can be seen that E is a function of C, W, and sigma. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and the gradient descent training process suggests the above three sets of parameters so that this equation tends to be smallest. This algorithm, it uh, iteratively updates these three values using the following equation seven, yes. eight, and uh, nine. Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, then in section three, uh, we refine the RBF model and optimizing it with the simulated HZ data. Okay. Uh, we utilize, uh, we then utilize these hyperparameters 
gained from simulated HZ data to reconstruct fun uh, a, a function based on observational hyperparameter data and yes. get predicted uh, HZ and sigma Z. Okay. And to fine tune the neural network model for reconstructing observational hyperparameter data, the approach to mimic uh, OHD data taken in this paper follows the method used by Wang uh, in 2020. Yes. Uh, they simulated the hyperparameter HZ based on a flat lambda CDM cosmological model which assumes a universe with a cosmical constant lambda and Kodak matter CDM. Okay. In their simulation, they use a fiducial uh, a Hubble constant H sub uh, zero of uh, 70 kilo, uh, kilometers per second per megaparsec. Uh, mega yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> Yeah. Good. Good. And a matter uh and a matter energy uh density parameter omega m of 0 0.3. Uh -huh. so our paper adopts the same simulation parameter for HD in the radio basis function neural network model to ensure consistency and reliability in the optimization process. Okay. Okay. And in the study, um, the relationship between arrow in the Hubble parameter HZ and the redshift Z is examined and presented in figure two. Uh, so let's see figure two. Let's see. Um, there we go. Reconstruct errors. Okay. Yeah. And it is observed that as the redshift uh, increases, so does the arrow associated with HZ. So following the methodology of Ma and Zhang in 2011, okay. uh, it is assumed that this arrow increases in linearly with redshift. Okay. Initially, the HZ data is fitted with a first-degree polynomial, uh, which leads to a baseline mean arrow line uh, represented by sigma 0 equals 9.72z plus 14.887, uh, which okay. is depicted as a dash blue line at the, uh, in the figure. Yes. The line is considered the mean value of HZ at any given redshift. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm with you. Yes. And uh, to encapsulate the majority of data points within a, prob uh, a probable error range, two additional lines, uh, so displayed as solid green lines, are uh, positioned sim uh, uh, symmetrically around the mean value line with yeah. these two functions. The arrow term sigma had z uh, is then generated using a Gaussian distribution centered around sigma sub zero z with the spread uh, epsilon z uh, defined as uh, sigma plus uh, sigma sub plus minus sigma uh, sub minus divided by four. Okay. <laughs> and this red. Uh, is chosen such, uh, uh, and this red is chosen um, such that the actual arrow sigma z falls within this range with a uh, ninety-five per, uh, uh, percentage uh, probability. Okay, equation eleven. That's our gamma function. Okay, yes. I'm with you. Okay, uh, good. I'm with you. Okay, mm -hmm. so when uh, simulating fiducial values of Hubble parameter, uh, they are uh, they h uh, feed z and mm -hmm. the random variation uh, delta h are added, drawn okay. from a Gaussian okay. distribution with a mean of zero and uh, a standard variation of sigma z, yes. um, and uh, the simulated Hubble parameter h sim z is thus uh, h feed z plus the plus this variation delta h right. uh, where uh, sigma z represents the okay. uncertainty which is not precisely known yes okay mm -hmm. and um, by this approach we can simulate samples of the hyperparameter consistent with the uh, 
uh, expected redshift and error distribution of a flat lambda CDM model. Okay. Mm -hmm. As it is clarified in this paper, uh, this model for the arrow in HZ assumed to grow linearly with redshift does not impact the reconstruction of the observational HZ itself as per okay. the reference by Ma and Zhang in 2011. Okay, that's important. So, yeah, that's very important. So uh, therefore, the arrow model used is deemed suitable for the purpose for of enhancing the neural network model within this study. Okay. Um, yes. And in um uh and in yeah, subsection uh three point two, um we described the training of the radio basis function neural network using simulated hyperparameter data HZ based on the flat uh, lambda CDM model as outlined in section uh, in subsection 3.1. Yeah. Um, this simulated data set comprises 32 data points aligning yeah. with the number of points in the observational data set. Uh, data set. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the RBF uh, neural network model assumes a specific form as presented in equation uh, 13 of the paper, which 13, just this uh -huh. one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, where CI represents the center of the radio basis function and WIG is the weight or voting parameter. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the model employs a Gaussian radio basis function, a common choice for RBF neural networks defined by RBF Xn Xi, with gamma being a hyperparameter that influences the spread of the RBF. Yes. So a hyperparameter is a parameter that must be preset by the user prior to training, uh, yeah. as it is not determined by the algorithm itself. Correct, yep. Mm -hmm. and two critical parameters, uh, not hyperparameters, but parameters, are used uh, in this uh, in the full uh, RBF neural network model. Uh, the first CI uh, is informed by all the data points, and the second WIG is derived through rate regression. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. This uh, re uh this. Yeah. Uh, not not rate regression, but rate regularization. Rate regularization. I'm uh, sorry. Regularization. Got it. Regularization. Yeah. Yes, not regression. Right. I'm with you. Okay. So, yeah. Through so rate regularization. Rigid. This. Yeah. This rate. Uh. This rate regularization technique is crucial to combat overfitting especially in scenarios where the RBF model error could be zero no. um, yeah. and creating a too perfect fit to the training data and might not generalize well to the new data. Right. Okay. And the regularization is mathematically represented uh, as uh, WIG. Uh, uh -huh. Because... Uh, where it adds penalty. Uh-huh. But I don't see the I think there should be an equation here. Uh oh yes, here in the uh last three fourteen sentences. Yes, I saw it now. Oh, it's gone. 14, 13. No, no, no. It's not uh it's not equation. It's in the uh oh. it's uh in in the text. In, in the par uh yes. Yeah, in the paragraph. Okay, yeah. so we got uh WIJ here, right? Yes, okay. WIJ. Uh, uh -huh. oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so the regularization is uh mathematically represented as WIJ, uh where uh, Z is the matrix of RBF values and Y is the target output vector. And uh, lambda is the regularization parameter that determines the extent the 
uh, regularization term effect. Uh -huh. And this lambda is a hyperparameter. Okay. Okay. Uh, which should be determined by us. Right. Um, and the read regret uh, regularization functions by uh, adding a penalty to the arrow function or objective function, uh, shrinking the weight parameters value to prevent overfitting. Yes. Uh, if you remember our equation five and six. I do. Um, yes, the equation five and six. Um, is here. This is our uh, our Y, the RBF matrix. Yes, uh, this is the five, uh, the fifth one. Uh, and then the sixth one is dark. yeah. And the sixth one is uh, this. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the objective function compromises of C W and sigma, and you could see that the objective function or the arrow function are added with the penalty term. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, uh, this process ensures that the RBF neural network model achieves a more effective balance between accurately modeling the training data and maintaining the ability to generalize to new onsen data. Okay, good. Okay. And uh, optimizing uh, hyperparameter is a critical aspect, uh, aspect or uh, of um creating precise and reliable machine learning models mm -hmm. so hyperparameters which are set by users rather than learned from the data yes. include settings such as the learning rate the regularization strengths and the number of layer in a neural network yeah. techniques like cross validation and grid search are widely employed to uh, for fine tuning these hyperparameters uh, so in our study, uh, we've applied this model, uh, this methods on simulated Hubble uh, data to gain the best Hubble uh, hyperparameter and use them to reconstruct OHD data. Yes. Okay. Uh, so grid search is a method that systematically works through multiple combinations of hyperparameter settings. Uh, it is an uh, exhaustive approach that has been proven by uh, La Vela, mm -hmm. La, yes. La Vela. Good. Uh, uh, in 2004 um, to be uh, effective for hyperparameter tuning. And meanwhile, cross-validation is recognized for providing a more accurate and less optim uh, optimistic estimate of model performance than simpler uh -huh. techniques like a basic trend test split. Yeah, right, okay. Good. I'm with you. Uh, so for our particular research, we divided a data set of 32 points into five groups through random shuffling. Okay. Uh, we then rotate each rotated uh, each group as the test set and utilize the remainder for training. Uh, so with great search, we okay. explored various hyperparameter okay. combinations and assess uh, um, the model performance on the test set using mean square arrow as the yardstick. I'm with you. Uh, our, uh, yeah. our exploration covered learning rate of uh, 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and 0 0.1, and regularization term value lambda from 0 to 1 in increment of 0 0.1 and a spectrum of neuron counts. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. I'm with you. Good. Uh, yeah, maybe I speak too fast because I have a yeah. copy of mine. You're here. good. You're good. I'm fine. I'm following you. It's not too yeah. fast. Yeah. Uh, I'm worried. I'm too fast. The, and the hyperparameters yielding the lowest average MSE, uh, which is uh, which is the uh, arrow function or the objective function we saw just now. Um, uh, I think it's the equation uh, uh, 13. 13 was our... Yeah, it, it has... Uh, right. it has an, no, not 13, uh, but, uh, so, oh, I, I thought it's equation six. Oh. That, it has a name yeah, of 
That's E. Mean square arrow. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a mean square arrow. Correct. Uh, so the type of parameters uh, yielding the lowest average uh, MSE across all groups uh, were okay. identified as optimal. Okay. Uh, and this turned out to be a learning rate for gradient descent algorithm of 0 0.01, uh, RBF parameter gamma of 0 0.2, and the okay. uh, Visualization term lambda of 0 0.3 and a neuron count of uh, 10, uh, 10 to the fifth. Yeah, 10 to the fifth. Yep. Uh, and after employing great search with cross validation, the study identified the optimal radio basis functional network model and uh, this model was used to reconstruct the simulated hyperparameter parameter values discussed earlier, yes. and the reconstruction results are displayed in the uh, left panel of figure three. So let's see figure three. Let's do figure three. Let's blow this up. Let's take a look at the left, left. panel. Okay. Yeah, just to have a look. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh. Okay. So to evaluate the performance of the RBF neural network model, uh, calculations were performed for the uh, matter density uh, parameter omega m, uh, following the methodology outlined by this, uh, I think there were three scholars. Okay. Uh, I I'm moving forward. I have no yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Keep I'm going. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, following by these three scholars. Yes. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, these calculations represented by uh, equation 14 yes. involving using the ratio H. <laughs> which is the predicted HZ divided by H0 from the RBF model. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, the predicted matter density parameter omega m using simulated harbor, uh, harbor data are illustrated in the uh, red panel uh, of figure three. Yes, uh-huh, omega m versus z, uh-huh. Yes, and the resulting graph demonstrates that the function reconstructed by RBFN aligns closely with the exploitation of a flat lambda CDM with a prior Hubble constant zero, uh, H sub zero uh, equals uh, 67.8. Right. And omega m equals to zero point three two six. Yes. Okay. And this uh, concurrence indicates that the RBF model constructed in the study is uh, reliable. I think. Yeah, uh, that's what it says. Very yeah. good. Okay. And uh, so utilizing the uh, the hyperparameters. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yes. So right. utilizing the hyperparameters determined in the previous section, we trained a model on observational hyperparameter data to reconstruct the HZ function, which was then uh, graphically represented. Uh, the Reconstruction using the RBF neural network yielded an Hubble constant value of H sub zero equals to uh, 67.072 uh, plus and minus 9.7. Uh, okay. Yes, and oh. in figure four. Yes. The performance of the RBF neural network is benchmarked against a flat lambda CDM model yes. with a predetermined uh, Hubble constant uh, 
Yes, H sub zero equals to 67.82. Yeah, just like before. Just like it's before. Same. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh huh. Yeah. And the completion, uh, the comparison, um, the comparison, especially uh, in the left panel of figure four, uh, indicates that at lower red shifts, the RBF neural network. Uh, reconstructed HZ aligns closely with the flat lambda CDM's uh, model's prediction. Yeah. Uh, however, at higher redshifts, the RBF reduction uh, divides more noticeable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we suspect that this uh, divergence is attributed to the absence of covariance in the observational data, ah, which okay. affects the model's accuracy at greater distance. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Okay. Yep. We'll come back to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in section four, I think. Yeah. Reconstructing. Uh, yes. In section yeah. four, to verify the hypothesis that the lack of uh, uh, covariance may lead to an accurate prediction um, results as mentioned in the previous section. We mm -hmm. proposed a new method for reconstructing OHD data using redshift pairs and their That's corresponding covariance uh, Yeah, in this section. Okay, mm -hmm. four one, yes. Uh, so 4.1, uh, this, uh, this subsection introduces uh, our innovative approach to reconstruct OHD data uh, to reconstruct OHD, uh, utilizing the Cardassian product of uh, redshift uh, pairs. Mm -hmm. The Cardassian product applied to an ordered set generates or uh, generates all possible ordered pairs from two sets okay. and it incorporating every element from this set. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, in the context, um, the method transforms individual redshift points Z into pairs Z1 and Z2. Yes. And accordingly reconstruct um the outputs which are the hyperparameter uh hz and yeah. its uncertainty sigma z into uh hz1 sigma z1 uh hz2 sigma z2 right okay and given 32 observed values formatted as z hz sigma hz uh, this sigma z this transformation results in pairs uh, yeah. like z i z j h z i sigma z i h z j and uh, uh sigma z j for well, i j is equal to thirty two. Yes, that's our thirty two. Uh huh. I'm with you. Good. And uh, this technique emphasizes maintaining the uh mod uh monotonicity of the hyperparameter uh relative to redshift which is crucial for accurately reconstructing the data and essential for exploring the covariance between observed points. Uh, yes, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, by, uh, so by uh, opting for condition product over permutations or combinations uh, of, uh, for uh, the 32 observed redshift points. The method ensures the uh, pre uh, preservation of this uh, monotonicity uh, yielding a set of uh, 1,024, uh, which is 32 times 32 elements yep. uh, for further covariance analysis. Okay, I'm with you, I'm good. Yeah, so, a uh, 10,022 times two matrix, 10, uh, times two <laughs> matrix of redshift pairs, H I H Z is input into uh, an RBF neural network yes. and trained with the optimal uh, hyperparameter identified earlier. Correct. Uh, which then produces <laughs> uh, 
uh, ten thousand and uh, uh, one thousand and uh, twenty four times four output matrix dealing a uh, detailing on um, uh, HZ and sigma Z for each pair. Right. Okay. Cool. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. uh, so given that each redshift point will be associated with uh, uh, 64, which is 32 plus 32 corresponding HZ and sigma Z values from the uh, 1024 redshift pairs, mm -hmm. uh, it becomes necessary to uh, consolidate these uh, multiple values. Uh, so this consolidation involves extracting all HZ and sigma Z values for each red shift point and calculating their mean to determine a unique HZ and sigma Z for each point. Okay, okay. So the reconstruction achieved through this process is depicted, uh, is depicted in figure five by the orange line. Yeah, uh, the orange line. Mm -hmm. Orange one, orange there. Here we go, orange. Yeah, yes, the orange one. Yes, and then it goes down here. Okay, then I lose it. Okay, good. And then we got the different ones. And uh, mm -hmm. so it shows us the model's cap uh, capability to accurately model OHD while considering covariance between data. Uh, uh, just uh, just considering covariance between data points because we are not uh explain ex explicitly at covariance yet. Right, correct. Okay. Mm hmm Here that with that. Right. Huh. Mm hmm Okay, good. So good. in section four. Uh, point two, we yeah. apply observational covariance uh, to reconstruct OHD data on the basis of uh, red shift pairs. Mm -hmm. uh, so building on previous work, this subsection focuses on enhancing the accuracy of hyper constants reconstruction by factoring in the covariance between red shift points. Uh, the i think uh yes the the 31 as you could see here right uh, so mm -hmm. forget about it it should be 32. yeah okay i was gonna say where'd one go <laughs> it's okay 32. We have a <laughs> yeah type. because I, at the beginning of our uh research um there is uh 31 ohd points okay, however by the time we yeah. we'll submit the paper yeah it happened uh, okay uh, so the 32 observational hyperparameter data points uh, sourced from cosmic chronometer methods across various uh, uh, galaxy samples and analyzed using different techniques are presumed independent with no inherent covariance. And uh, okay. notably, 15 of these data points were determined by Morasco. Okay. Uh, uh, employing the D4000 method, okay. uh, so, which included a comprehensive uh, evolution of, of potential error sources, such as statistical error, uh, contamination from young galaxies, yeah. and uh, discrepancy in galaxy spectral models and assumption regarding stellar uh, formation history, yeah. uh, etc. Yeah. And um, they also proposed a method to compute the covariance matrix okay. uh, and accessible through their open source program. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I will skip on their procedure because everyone could find uh, the link to this wonderful program on the footnote night. Well, I appreciate you calling that a wonderful link. Very good, okay. Yeah, it's a wonderful program. Uh, okay, okay. And, uh, so uh, in summary, uh, the first step is to apply the uh, the uh, redshift reconstruction method based on Cardassian product proposed in previous subsection. And uh -huh. uh, 
uh, input the uh, well, it should be uh, one thousand and twenty four. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is thirty one times thirty one. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Um, uh, matrix uh, Z I Z G into an R B F neural network, and uh, like the redshift. Uh, uh, reconstruction method based on the Cartesian product. An additional fifth column is added in the output layer, which represents the uh, observation covariance between redshift pairs. Yeah, uh, right. And this results in an uh, output matrix of... Uh, four. Yeah, 1,024 times five. Right. Denoted as uh, HZI, Sigma ZI, HZJ, Sigma ZJ, and covariance IJ. Cool. And as verified by experiments in this article, separately fitting a univariate model and directly fitting a multivariate model have a significant impact on the results. Sure, yes. Um, yes. Mm. So uh, uh, in section 4.3, in subsection 4.3, uh, uh, we evaluate the reconstruction accuracy of observational Hubble data by uh, incorporating covariance through a chi-square test. Okay. Uh, non-parametric uh, distribution-free method assessing the fit between observed and uh, expected data. Yes. This a uh, statistical approach helps to uh, quantify the variations and supporting a comparative analysis of different reconstruction methods without uh, pursuing a specific population distribution. Right. Um, and we specifically applied the chi-square test to assess how well various models, including uh, a Gaussian process model and neural network-based approach, Okay. Uh, and, uh, match up against actual OHD observation. Yes, good. It uh, good. compares the observed data points O with... Uh, e, which was back in the equation six. Uh, yeah, values E. Uh -huh. uh, utilizing a formula tailored to cos uh, cosmological data analysis. Uh, and this formula accounts for both predicted uh, and observed Hubble parameter values at different red shifts. Yes. Along yeah. with their uh, respective uncertainties. Sigma. Uh, sigma HP and Sigma uh, HO. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so statistical analysis of uh, 32 OHD points shows... Yes, uh, 32. Mm -hmm. Yes, 32. Uh, we've updated uh, the numbers, but not, we've updated the numbers, but not 31 and 32. Oh, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I, I get it. Uh -huh. Statistical analysis of 32 OHD points shows the Gaussian process model yielding a chi-square sum of 12.4. Uh -huh. With the neural network based model providing varying results. Uh, the redshift pair method based on Cartesian product, yes. uh, especially uh, considering observation covariance, demonstrates superior uh, accuracy with oh. a chi square sum of 4.17 yes. uh, and mean of 0 0.14 and median of 0 0.03. Cool. So yes. it indicates a more precise reconstruction of OHD. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So uh, figure five visualizes uh, the reconstruction outcomes of three proposed models. Yes. Figure five, yes. Uh, so this figure visualizes the uh, reconstruction outcomes of three proposed models compared to AN Gaussian process and theoretical lambda CDM model. Okay. Um, the results underscore the effectiveness of the redshift pair method, particularly mm -hmm. when it integrates observation covariance in capturing the trend of Hubble parameter values at higher redshifts yeah. uh, overcomes limitations of the yeah. uh, original RBF neural network model and 
offers a close fit to the lambda CDM model. And this evidences this method's capability to improve reconstruction accuracy uh, by accounting for covariance between observed data points. Yes. So in conclusion, uh, we adopt a model independent strategy, namely RBF neural network derived from ANN to uh, reconstruct the Hubble parameter data, which aiming to derive a reliable value uh, for the Hubble constant H0, H sub zero. Uh, and by simulating 32 observational HZ data points based on a uh, flat lambda CDM model with prefined uh, values, uh, we utilize this, this simulation to fine tune an RBF model through five fold grid search cross validation. Yes. And uh, this process identifies optimal hyperparameter, which are uh, then applied to train the RBF on observed HZ data yeah. and resulting in uh, constructed HZ equals uh, 67.1 plus and minus uh, 90, uh, 9, uh, 9.7. Okay, cool. And this study demonstrates the potential of an class of model uh, and particularly RBF neural network to offer a more dependable alternative to Gaussian process methods yeah. uh, for reconstructing HZ, um, I think. Uh, and uh, however, a noticeable a, a notable discrepancy at higher redshift in the RBF reconstruction suggests a sensitivity to outliers due sure. to the assumption of data points independence. And this depend, uh, discrepancy underscores the inherent challenges in accurately reconstructing the universe's expansion history with neural network models, and including uh, suscept uh, susceptibility to overfitting or underfitting, and the impact of sparse high uh, redshift data points. Right, which is what we have. Uh -huh. Yes. So to overcome these obstacles, we propose this enhancing the influence of data covariance as a mean to incorporate more relevant information and migrate uh, and mitigate outlier sensitivity. A novel uh, redshift pair based reconstruction method using the Cartesian product introduces this covariance. Yes. Um. So it, and it shows. Uh, and it shows. Uh kind of promising results in chi square test, test for improved uh, correlation uh, between data points and reconstruction accuracy. It did, very cool. Uh, uh, and, the in, and the incorporation of observational covariance into the uh, RBF uh, model further validates this approach and significantly refining the OHD uh, reconstructions reliability as confirmed by chi square test. Yes. So I think in summary, this study not only proves the uh, efficacy of ANN class of model in reconstructing HZ data without relying on specific model okay. models, but also advances the methodology by integrating data covariance through a redshift pair based approach. Uh, and I think future research directions uh, could explore alternative neural network architectures okay. uh, and adopt more direct approach to incorporate covariance. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think that's uh, that's uh, that's it. Cool. You did a great job. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for walking us through your very lovely article. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, and you touched on it a little bit there toward the end uh, on, uh, you know, where do you, where do you think we go from here, given the published article, right? So you did mention that there could be other machine learning algorithms um, and so on. Uh, but one of the things that really sticks out to me is that there's only 32 data points. So what would it take to get to 
320 data points or 3,000 data points? Is, do we expect this from some of the upcoming surveys, uh, either ground-based or space-based telescopes? Just sort of, so where do we go from here improving that 32? Yeah, mm, I would like to do talk about this. Okay. Uh, currently, we only make use of the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. Uh -huh. uh, the, the main part of the uh, selected samples. Uh, and uh, that only uh, contains the data release 9. But okay. now we got the data release uh, 16, yes. uh, which uh, we got uh, over 1 million uh, galaxy spectra. Yes. And we can cross match them with, cross, uh, uh, with other uh, photometric data yeah. surveys like decos and mm -hmm. something like that. And yeah. we can um, make improvement uh, on the selection criterion of the passive galaxies. Cool. Altogether, we can um, improve the, and make a large sample of the uh, passive galaxies that can improve the statistical um, uncertain uh, accuracy of the hyperparameter data, and also the sample size of the hyperparameter data. Yeah, and uh, apart from that, um, the main contribution of the uh, systematical um, uncertainty comes from the stellar population synthesis models we uh, choose. Fair and uh, in the research uh, that carried out um, uh, by Michele Molesco in 2020, yes. uh, he pointed out that uh, uh, if we excluded uh, the very ordinary, uh, very outer layer, yeah, that's uh, yeah. and we can got, got uh, a much reliable constraint on the differential age, and that can yeah. also improve the accuracy of the upper parameter data. Nice. And uh, uh, if, uh, apart from that, we can also look forward for upcoming surveys like um, kids. <laughs> accompanying with their spectroscopic service like Viking. Yeah. And we can uh, even uh, get a big, because uh, uh, they, they cover a kilo degree of the sky. Cool. And we can even more uh, spectres to do this. Right, right. Very and cool. Thank you. Well, I really look forward to seeing that develop over the next couple of years. That'll be very exciting. Uh, and I look forward to seeing this method uh, being applied uh, to larger samples and all of that. It'll be very nice to see this develop. And I look forward to your future APJ papers or supplement papers. Thank you. All righty. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and that will do, everyone. And I hope this made your astronomy day just a little bit better. And we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank, you. Bye. thank you. Thank you.